Are you the son of a narcissistic mother who feels trapped in an unhealthy and dependent relationship with her? You're not alone. The term enmeshment is used by psychologists to describe the toxic and codependent relationship that can develop between a narcissistic parent and their child. This is especially common in mother-son relationships, where the mother becomes overly attached and emotionally reliant on her son, grooming him to be a replacement spouse of sorts. This enmeshment can be just as damaging as sexual incest and can prevent the son from developing a healthy sense of self and independence. In this video, we will explore the harmful effects of mother-son enmeshment and its impact on the son's psychosocial growth. So, let's get started. What is enmeshment? You have probably noticed that a mother's relationship with her son is different than that of her relationship with her daughter. When the mother is a narcissist, this difference becomes more extreme. While she may be jealous of her daughter and resent the fact that she is a younger, more beautiful, and better version of herself, she often becomes enmeshed with her son. The term enmeshment was first used in family therapy to describe a relationship between two or more people who are so connected to one another that they can lose their individuality. There is typically an imbalance of power in the enmeshed relationship. One person becomes overly dependent on the other, and in the case of a narcissistic mother, she often suffocates her son with her neediness. She expects that he will be a reflection of her, but she often grooms him to be a replacement spouse. She believes it is her son's job to meet her unrealistic needs, and as a result, she is like an emotional vampire, sucking the life out of him. She drains him both physically and emotionally. How does the enmeshment occur between a narcissistic mother and her son? The problem with a narcissistic parent is that they don't see their children as independent people. They see them as extensions of their own identity, and as such, they often become vital sources of narcissistic supply. When a narcissistic mother views her son in this way, she wants to control every aspect of his life. She may begin to manipulate him to encourage him to become overly dependent upon her. She wants him to come to her for help in making decisions. She may also begin to groom him as a kind of replacement spouse. While this may never become a sexual relationship, it can do just as much damage. The narcissistic mother fears abandonment, and when she becomes enmeshed with her son, she begins to try to control him so that he will never leave her. She has little concern for his healthy development, she is only thinking about her own needs. Although this sounds like she is the one who is dependent upon her son, she is actually the one in control. She uses manipulation to get him to attend to her emotional and physical needs. She may even eventually expect him to manage her affairs and finances. What are the signs of enmeshment with a narcissist? There are several indications a son might be enmeshed with his narcissistic mother. They all indicate that her emotional abuse has worked to bind her son to her in a way that is difficult to undo. The most common signs are the following. Her son feels like he can't do anything without his mother's approval. He is obsessed with his mother's well-being. He feels obligated to take care of her. He puts her needs before his. He feels he can't express his own opinions. He asks her opinion on everything. He refuses to make a decision without first consulting her. He allows her to interfere in every aspect of his life. You might think about the enmeshed son as a mama's boy, and that's fairly accurate description. He has difficulty asserting his independence, and he doesn't just want her advice. He needs it. That's the strength of enmeshment. What are the dynamics between narcissistic mothers and their sons? Because a narcissistic mother lacks empathy, she doesn't understand the damage her behavior is doing to her son's sense of identity. 
While all children suffer this way because of a narcissistic parent, a narcissistic mother's son experiences often irreparable damage to his sense of autonomy, his feelings of self-worth, and the ability to form stable relationships as an adult. The dynamics that create this type of unhealthy relationship involve the following behaviors on the part of a narcissistic mother. Idealization Narcissistic relationships go through a series of stages, the first of which is idealization. This happens early in the relationship. A narcissistic mother may praise her son effusively during this stage of their relationship. She believes herself to be superior to other people, and therefore, her son is as well. She often praises his rapid development. She boasts to friends about how he is progressing more rapidly than other children his age. She adores him, and this early bonding is what she will use to her advantage as time goes on. Devaluation The idealization stage can't possibly last forever because a narcissist always has unrealistic expectations of any relationship in which they are involved. This includes the relationship a narcissistic mother has with her own son. When he begins to mature and challenge her authority, as is natural for children to do, she doubles down on control tactics with devaluation. She says things designed to tear down his self-esteem and make him more dependent on her. She can say some very unmotherly things, to say the least. She does this to bring her child back under her strict control. Emotional discard or neglect The last stage of a narcissistic relationship is the discard. Between romantic partners, this results in a breakup. But between a narcissistic mother and her son, this can happen on an emotional level. She can go from being a doting, loving mother to a neglectful mother in the time span of a few seconds. She withdraws her love in response to any perceived slight from her son. She uses this neglect as a manipulation tool to get her son to beg her to stop ignoring him. She feels extremely powerful when she can achieve this kind of control, and she will use it again and again. Triangulation Another manipulation tactic the narcissistic mother uses is something called triangulation. In layman's terms, this is playing both ends against the middle. The narcissistic parent will tell her son one thing and his siblings or other parents something entirely different. It is designed to undermine the relationships her son has with other family members and friends. It's an extremely destructive technique because it can even destroy an entire family. It serves the narcissist because her goal is to get her son to believe only what she says. She does this by making him feel as though he can't trust his closest family and friends. It also feeds the narcissist's ego by making her feel powerful. She sees how easy it is to play the puppet master and get everyone to do what she wants. Additionally, she feels superior in intelligence in that she can cause all of this to happen without anyone realizing what she is doing. The Oedipus Complex and a Son's Seduction Freud first identified the Oedipus Complex in young boys. The idea is that your opposite-sex parent is your first exposure to sexual excitement. It typically occurs in young children who feel a sense of arousal from their opposite-sex parent. Freud applied this initially to boys and identified a similar complex, the Electra Complex, in girls. The narcissistic mother can use this psychological phenomenon to seduce her own son, even if it is only on an emotional level. She may purposefully sexualize her relationship with her son and act inappropriately in her behavior, appearance, and language. She is effectively grooming her son to become a replacement spouse. Narcissists learn early in life that people will often leave them behind, and she fears that this will happen with her actual spouse. Her son, however, offers her an opportunity to bind herself to someone who she believes cannot leave her behind. 
The relationship might never become physical, but it ultimately does just as much damage to her son's ability to mature and form adult romantic relationships. This is exactly what his toxic mother is hoping will happen. Jealousy and Control A narcissistic mother is often obviously jealous of her daughter. She sees her as a threat to her superiority because she is a younger, prettier, smarter, and often more accomplished version of herself. She is also jealous of her son, however. Typically, this takes the form of jealousy toward any relationships he may form with other women. She will seek to destroy any such relationships. She doesn't want her son to be influenced by any other woman in his life. That would undermine his absolute commitment to her. It would also threaten her false self-image. She feels as though the whole world will see that her son has chosen another woman. Of course, she will also take advantage of any argument her son may have with a woman. She will assure him that she is not good enough for him, and she will make obvious attempts to get him to see that. Her son often feels guilt-ridden when he is caught between the two women in his life. He is still tightly bound to his mother, and he feels bad when she believes he is abandoning her or taking someone else's side against her. Her actions are so toxic that they are often very effective at destroying any relationship her son has with another woman. Finally, narcissistic mother-son enmeshment is a toxic attachment between mother and son that can damage the son for the rest of his life. It creates deep emotional wounds that last a lifetime and create a pattern of dependent, abusive behavior. These sons have difficulty breaking away from the toxic web in which their narcissistic mother has trapped them. They are easily manipulated by emotional triggers associated with profound guilt and shame, but there is help. To begin the healing journey, the son of a narcissistic mother must first break free of her manipulation. That means identifying and healing emotional wounds. I've created a five-step roadmap to heal emotional triggers that can help you do just that. This handy guide will take you through the process of identifying, diffusing, and even healing those emotional wounds that create debilitating triggers. If you would like a free copy of this guide, just click on the link below and I will send it directly to your inbox. You can begin your healing journey today. Thanks for watching.